So this picture, we have the concentration rates. We didn't get into real numbers, we will in just a second, but that's what that picture is. If we had to draw the permeability picture, this is what we would draw. We would draw P sodium, and we'll put a number there, and we'll draw an arrow that's very, very small for sodium to move across the membrane. Because at rest, permeability is little when it comes to sodium. For potassium, the permeability of potassium is huge compared to sodium. It's one, it's 20 times bigger. So potassium, which moves out of the cell passively, give yourself a nice big arrow because there's gonna be way more potassium moving across the membrane at rest. Again, this is resting membrane potential we're talking about. Things are gonna change as we'll see on Wednesday. And then chloride is somewhere in between. The permeability of chloride is 0.45. It's gonna move into the cell and a pretty decent amount is at rest. So we get a visual here as to the movement of these ions, relative movement of these ions at rest. And again, this is measured, and permeability can go up or down. Permeability can be zero. Permeability of sodium can go much higher than 0.05. Okay, permeability of potassium can go much lower than one. The bigger the number, the more the movement. So, as we increase permeability, P, you increase movement across the membrane. And then obviously the opposite is going to hold true. When you decrease permeability, and again it's measured, when you decrease permeability, you decrease the movement of the ion, we're talking specifically about ions, across the membrane. Okay? So a bunch of facts to start off. Now that we have all these facts, now that we've established many of the things that we need to understand to understand membrane potential, let's see how it's done. And again, you have to know these values like the back of your hand, but we're gonna draw, all right? So, what we have here at rest, we have these concentrations, we have these permeabilities. The concentration gradient and the permeabilities create an environment that dictates the movement of these ions across the membrane. The concentration gradient will dictate which way they move. The permeabilities will dictate how much moves across the membrane. So we're going to put those two things together along with these values, and what we're going to draw is this picture from scratch. And that picture from scratch is all those words right there. Those words right there tell you how resting membrane potential is generated. Those words right there. And when we're done, when we're done with this picture, we're going to have a picture that looks similar to this one, but not exactly that. All right? So what we're going to do now how is membrane potential generated? That's what we're going to do, okay? Finally, that's what we get to. So we're gonna draw a cell. So here's our cell, all right? We're gonna have our sodium and our potassium and our chloride concentrations, but we're going to draw the real numbers. So sodium concentration outside the cell is about 145 milliequivalents per liter. That's the osmolality of sodium on the outside of the cell. Okay, we know what osmolality is, right? It's a measure of the concentration of ions. We're measuring specifically the osmolality of sodium, and it happens to be about 145. If we measure the osmolality of sodium inside the cell, it would be about 15 milliequivalents per liter. All right? Which is actually osmolarity, but, but we don't have to get that technical about things, because they're both the same thing inside the body. Potassium, 135 inside the cell, and it's about five. I put equal, let's put about, because it's gonna vary a little bit. We know that everything in the body has a normal range. And then chloride, let's just stick chloride way over here. It's about 110 out here, and inside the cell, it's about eight. Again, you have to know these values like the back of your hand. You have to memorize these values so that you can understand membrane potential, okay? Now these are ions, they're positively and they're negatively charged. Can they move across the membrane by themselves through simple diffusion? Yes or no? Nope. What can move across the membrane via simple diffusion? Small what? Soluble 
fat soluble molecules and gases can move across the membrane through simple diffusion. Well, these cannot do that. They need help. They need to be facilitated. So this is going to be facilitated diffusion through channels. And these channels that these ions are moving through to generate a resting membrane potential have a special name. They're called leak channels. And so we're going to draw them. So I'm going to draw here a sodium leak channel. And we're going to make it plural. Sodium leak channels. Make it plural because there's thousands of them. We don't have time to draw thousands of leak channels. We're just going to draw one as representative of many, many leak channels. Potassium, same thing. That would be a potassium leak channel, okay? And again, make it plural. The chloride ions that's generating resting membrane potential, and again, that's what this is. This is how resting membrane potential is generated in the cell. That is a chloride leak channel. Now, why do they call them leak channels? Because like a drippy faucet, these ions are trickling through, all right? It's not flooding into and out of the cell, they're trickling in and out of the cell. Again, like a leaky faucet. But one of these leaky faucets is leaking more than the other two leaky faucets. Which one's leaking the most, given permeability values? A potassium channel, or channels. There's more uh, potassium moving through those. So what we'll do next to these channels is put the permeability. So permeability of potassium is one. Permeability of sodium at rest is 0.05. Permeability of chloride, again, at rest is 0.45. The bigger the number, the more the movement. The number tells you that. Again, it's a measured value. And by the way, what makes the permeability different? A lot of different things, but at rest, this is one of the main things that makes these numbers different. And again, it's a measured value. Why is the permeability of potassium 20 times greater than sodium at rest? It's a numbers thing. So what I'm gonna do in this picture, just to demonstrate, that is going to equal a sodium leak channel. Okay, that's not the number 11, that's a channel. I'm gonna draw the, the, actually, you know what, I'm gonna draw it different, I'm gonna make it squiggly. I'm gonna draw this, the sodium leak channel squiggly, and I'm gonna draw the potassium leak channel nice and straight, because I have to draw a lot more of them. So this is a cell. In the membrane of that cell, there are 20 times more potassium leak channels than there are sodium leak channels. That's why the permeability is 20 times as high. There's more doors for, for potassium to move through, and so we'll draw it. So I'm gonna draw 20 potassium leak channels. One, two, three. It's really the number, seven. potassium leak channels there's one sodium leak channel that's why the permeability of potassium is so much higher at rest at rest guys than sodium there's just more stinking channels that's one of the main reasons is it the only reason it is not all right but it will help you understand okay are we good yes all right, how are we gonna generate a membrane potential? Well, we have permeability of each of these ions. Clearly we do, because they have numbers. None of the numbers for permeability is zero. If the number was zero, it means that the ions are not moving through the membrane, okay? We have concentration gradients, so the ions are going to move across the membrane if they have permeability, because they have a reason to move. Sodium is gonna move into the cell, right? Down is concentration gradient. Are we going to get a lot of movement though? No, how do we know that? Because that number is puny. So what we'll do through the channel, we give ourselves a visual, is as we did before, make the arrow small. And as all these sodium, maybe we get a million sodium ions moving through. In fact, it would be more than that. Let's just say a million. Of those million, maybe 10,000 sodium ions get stuck 
to the inner membrane, where most of the other sodium ions gonna end up? In the cytoplasm. Well, we don't care about that because this isn't cytoplasm potential, this is membrane potential. All we care about is what's happening at the membrane. So out of all those millions of sodium ions that move across the membrane, maybe 10,000 of them get stuck. Why did I draw them all over the cell when the sodium channel is over here? Because the sodium channels are scattered all over that cell. Okay, and we don't have time to draw, again, thousands of sodium channels. We have time to draw one that's representative of them all. So we have all these sodium ions moving through, but in relative uh, compared to the others, not a whole lot. Now potassium is going to move across the membrane as well. And it's going to move out of the cell, and a lot of it. How do we know that? Because we measured the permeability, because we can do that, and the number's big. So I don't know, 50 million potassium ions move across the membrane. I don't know, a couple hundred thousand get stuck to the outer membrane. 20 times as many positive charges from potassium get stuck to the outer membrane as compared to sodium. Is our membrane potential, right now, if we measured membrane potential, what would it be measured as, negative or positive? At this point in time, it would be measured as negative because we're comparing what happens on the inside of the cell versus what happens on the outside of the cell. Chloride is gonna be involved in this picture as well. Decent amount's gonna move in. How do we know that? Because the permeability is 0.45. Much, much higher than sodium, but not quite as high as potassium's permeability. And so, of those chloride ions that move into the cell, I don't know, let's say 30 or 40 million of them, I don't know, let's say 30 or 40,000 get stuck to that inner membrane. What's our membrane potential now? For sure, it's negative. How are we getting the distribution of ions just the right way? Because we have a normal sodium concentration on the outside and inside the cell, same thing with potassium, same thing with chloride. How are we getting the just the right amount of movement of those ions? Because we have normal permeabilities. If we start to screw up sodium concentration, we're gonna screw up other stuff. If we screw up potassium concentration, we're gonna screw up other stuff, why? Because we'll screw up membrane potential. You see how membrane potential is generated? It's the movement of the ions that matters. The movement of the ion is going to dictate the distribution of ions across that membrane. Now, you're not noticing that I have any negative charges on the outside of the cell. Do you think there are? Yes, did I tell you that I'm not giving you the whole story? I did, all right, but that's okay. Because really, of these three ions, one of them is having the biggest influence to resting membrane potential Tell me which one it is. The one that has the biggest influence is, it's potassium. Tell me why. Because it has the biggest permeability. Potassium has the biggest influence on resting membrane potential because it is the one that's moving the most. That's why. That's why membrane potential is going to be negative at rest. It has to do with potassium the most. Even though it is a positively charged ion, it has the greatest influence on membrane potential being negative. Why? Because the ions are moving out of the cell. And it says it in your notes. And I'll show you here. Permeability of potassium is one. Therefore, potassium plays the biggest role in determining resting. Don't just make sure you put resting there. If you're gonna write it out, you better put resting. Because when it comes to that nerve impulse that we'll talk about later, or action potential is what I'm gonna call it, it ain't potassium, okay? Because things are going to change, and change drastically. The permeability of sodium is gonna shoot up to the sky, and it's gonna be a hell of a lot bigger than potassium is. I'm going to show you that on Wednesday, all right? I also have it stated at a later time how potassium will play the biggest role in determining resting membrane potential. I just don't remember where the hell I put it, okay? So what we just drew is this. That is that. That 
shows you the concentrations of everything, the permeabilities of everything, and how those two things are going to influence the movement of these ions, which is going to dictate what membrane potential is. And on Wednesday, we'll continue with the story to talk about